हरे कृष्णा क्वेश्चन बाय मदर सीता ठकुरानी हाउ मच शुड बी केयर फॉर द सोसाइटी आई वॉज अंडर द इम्प्रेशन इट्स यूजलेस केयरिंग फॉर द सोसाइटी बट आफ्टर रीडिंग भगवती आई रियलाइज कृष्णा इज टेलिंग अर्जुना इफ यू रन अवे फ्रॉम योर ड्यूटी सोसाइटी विल मेक फन ऑफ यू विच शुड बी लाइक डेथ फॉर यू माई क्वेश्चन इज टू वॉट एक्सटेंड इन विच इन एंड विच मैटर्स वी केयर फॉर द सोसाइटी हाँ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन एंड इंडीड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन भगवदगीता इफ यू सी फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ भगवदगीता टीचर्स इज अबाउट थ्री धर्मस थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ धर्मस फर्स्ट धर्मा विच इज मॉरल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी देन देर इज अधर्मा विच इज इमोरल बिहेवियर एंड द थर्ड इज पराधर्मा सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सी सिक्वेंशली इट इज पराधर्मा धर्मा एंड अधर्मा so what is happening at the battlefield of kurukshetra lord shri krishna wants to establish you know dharma which means paro dharma in other words he want to establish uh, religious principles however arjuna was caught up on the platform of dharma which means mundane morality religious practices which means according to that uh, he should give consideration to his family members he should not fight with his family members for the purpose of wealth so this mundane morality is literally uh, is generally narrow mindedness what is narrow mindedness here we don't see the larger good of the society whereas paro dharma means the larger good of the society lord shri krishna wanted to establish or wanted arjuna to engage in paro dharma by which a larger good for the society would happen first it would be pleasing to krishna because krishna wanted that and krishna is we know bhakta we are going to saprasam sarva loka maheshwaram suhidam sarvodam so he is a beneficiary and friend for every living entity whatever he does is meant for good for every living entity so through that war of kurukshetra he wanted to establish yudhishthira maharaj's rule so that varnashrama dharma can be followed properly which would not have happened in the case of duryodhan wasn't happening properly in the case of duryodhan for that reason so krishna wanted establishment of that so para dharma is a broad mindedness now para dharma is broad mindedness dharma is narrow mindedness and adharma is total selfishness a uh, egoistic platform where a person does not care for anyone except for oneself uh let's say ravana you know destroying the whole family dynasty like dhritarashtra duryodhan destroying the whole family dynasty so they acted on a dharma platform because they were not bothered about anyone for that reason so these are the three levels of dharma which are discussed in bhagavad gita now when it comes to day to day interaction with the society at large uh we should consider this now first of all uh dharma what should we do is not an easy thing to understand therefore we need to have a guidance from those who have a thorough subject matter why i say so even bhishma pitamaha or uh, for that reason dronacharya others were bewildered what is the right thing to be done when yudhishthira maharaj lost draupadi draupadi came crying to them bhishma pitamaha how come in your presence something like this can happen and bhishma pitamaha said what can i do your husband lost you and she contested she said no he didn't lost me first of all he lost himself if he is already a slave then he has no right over me how can he put me on bed so the even bhishma pitama was bewildered so your question is uh, in which matters we should care for the society again that has to be taken into consideration according to time place circumstances but as far as if we see from the prabhupas shila prabhupas perspective as far as we are part of the society we need to care for the society in terms of uh you know the culture uh the practices we should not deny that just as much as let's say you know because we are practicing transcendence uh we are chanting hari krishna we are supposed to be situated in transcendental platform does not mean the rules and regulations of traffic laws does not apply to us now if there is a red signal who cares i'm a transcendentalist i'm going back home back to god and i'll jump the uh, traffic signal if the police catches you he's going to punish you how much ever you want to argue about it doesn't make sense so as we follow the rules and regulations similarly in the society where we live in in the family where we have got married to whatever culture that we have we have to follow that because uh, uh, you know there is one aspect of culture or the rules and regulation that it keeps law and order and also it's also largely connected with sentiments of an individuals so we have to consider that by by protecting one's own dharma which means the four regulatory principles should not be broken by our engagement of those activities uh you know our chanting should not uh it's not that we get in- involved in so much that we cannot chant the holy names of the lord or we cannot follow our vows that we have taken 
that should be done if if that is ensured then we should be for example i'll give you an example let's say we are in maharashtra right now there is a ganesh chaturthi festival now if anyone comes to invite you for ganesh chaturthi festival you cannot what do you expect or what do you say you cannot say oh ganesh is demi god we don't worship ganesh we are a devotee of lord shri krishna so we will not come because we only go to the temple of lord shri krishna well this would be offensive if you do so what would happen in return when you invite them for janmashtami festival then they will say oh we are not devotee of krishna we are devotee of ganesh ji we don't care for krishna then they will not come so that level of sensitivity should be there sensitivity which means broad mindedness the more broad mindedness open minded we are to that we will be sensitive to the needs interests and concerns of other people so again if i would say if in case we are caught up into a situation where we don't know what decision should be made the best uh, act at that point of time is to consult our seniors what should be the best course of action for myself uh, but through this question of yours which is a very important question i've kind of just given some clues about what bhagavad gita speaks about three levels of dharma and i just give you some examples of interaction with the society at large uh, and i also give an example that we cannot claim ourselves to be transcendental is thus no rules of this world apply to us we follow the traffic laws when we travel in the plane or when we travel in the st- uh, train we carry the tickets we cannot say oh don't you know i am hari krishna devotee i am transcendentalist how can you ask a ticket for me no we follow the rules and regulation we are supposed to similarly there is a certain aspect of culture and tradition that we should consider it that we should not just throw it out of the windows thinking that oh because our guru mahad didn't follow chetan mahapur didn't follow we should not follow it no we should be sensitive because it's not only about rules and regulations it's also about the sentiments uh, towards the tradition that people have as long as your personal practice is not compromised we should not get so much disturbed about it uh, unless if we are a little bit open and uh, up, you know uh, kind of kind of what i mean to say in terms of unless we begin to socialize people will stop socializing with us now on the name of socializing we should not cross our limit i'm not saying go and attend kitty parties and go and do everything or dance in the garbha night for 2 3 hours not like that but it's if it just takes 5 minutes to go and show your face meet with people and then excuse yourself that is also good enough people think you know he is not uh, completely uh, aloof from the society or not egoistic just saying their way is the best way and all of us are fools as long as we don't portray like that then we should do that you know we should we should uh, do that because our participation would also encourage them i uh, just like if there is a there is a let's say election from prime minister position now as a citizen of india now if a right government is not selected then it's going to also have an effect on our well-being we are part of the system you know you have to pay taxes uh, you are working within the same institution which is set up by the government opportunities are largely created by the government policies so one cannot say no we are a transcendentalists we got nothing to do with this world that doesn't make sense if that's the case then you should not be living in a grassa life you should not be working you should not be dependent on anyone else except for the holiness of the lord leave everything go to the forest and live entirely dependent on krishna but if in case you are dependent on karmis your professional life is dependent on karmis in the sense they have hired you so those all things functions according to the policies established so we need to uh, we can't close our eyes maybe for a brahmachari like me or for a sanyasi maybe we can make a statement like that but those who are part of the society where you have to interact with karmis or let's say non devotees on a day to day basis then you have to consider that your decision do have an impact on the overall society society is made up of individuals and how individuals contribute would give the direction to the society so your contribution makes a lot of difference so these are some thoughts on to it once again fantastic question thank you very much hari krishna